Well, since we were forced into a vacation this week, let's go do a wheel seal. Not too bad yet, but if the DOT sees that, they're gonna turn you every way but loose. Oh, cool, we got a little drain plug here. We'll turn it and drain the oil out of this hub before we take it off so it don't make a huge mess. That scan bushings are still good though. It's like, might as well throw brakes on here or at it, but these pads still got a lot of life on them and they're not like the smoothest, but we're legal. Can't get an L wrench in there because it's hub. The wrong way is also the right way of doing things. Especially when it's not too tight. So we got our tab bent back. We're just letting this hub oil drain out. Um, I don't have a socket that size, so I'm gonna have to go find one. Why is it gotta be on the hot side? Because that's how it always goes. It's like, how's it, how's a posi track on a Plymouth work. It just does. All right, well, I gotta get some sockets at Harbor Freight, I guess. For anyone fixing to do this at home, it ain't that hard. I should let this drain like it was. But uh, you have to back off your slack adjuster and what you guys didn't see on camera is me beating the living piss out of that drum for it to come off because I was just seized on this hub. I'll do that. You need a, a nice sledge will work. Mine's a little mini sledge, like a five pounder, but if you have a bigger one, you give it a couple good whacks, she'll come right off. Now these are the, on these newer trucks, obviously I don't have the bearing off yet, so I can't tell you guys, um, but being that this ring is here, these are the, you torque this to 300 foot pounds, okay? 
they got this cone in between them so it sets the preload for the bearing so it's basically like it takes the guesswork out of it and i, I <laughs> i'm pretty sure that this truck is like that because i see that um but yeah get a axle seal get a uh, wheel seal puller any harbor freight will have it socket set any one will have it now for some reason i thought that this was a four inch nut but it's not so this is like a two and a quarter or two and three eighths or whatever so we're just gonna get a whole set so we have them for future um i could have taken this in I typically don't like doing this kind of, well, I never was able to do this kind of stuff at home because I didn't have the space for it, but now that I do, um, and the biggest thing is, you know, taking the wheels off a semi-truck is you gotta have a big impact for it or something like that. And the, the three quarter inch Milwaukee makes easy work of that. But why am I doing this myself? I get extremely paranoid, like big time when I take my truck in to get a wheel seal done because I always worry that they screw that up and the wheels gonna come flying off. So. This is why we're doing as much of this stuff as we can ourselves. Because I don't think this is a expensive fix at a shop. I, I mean, shit, I, I don't know. I mean, a couple hundred dollars, really? That's about all it is. But uh, I just, like I said, I'd rather do everything myself. So we finally got the right socket. That's a two and a quarter inch. That's all I could find. That's definitely 300 foot pounds. Right, so we got our nut broken loose you can see the numbers so some of them are like concaved or they got like rounded edges this one does not this is just a locking nut as you can see this is the more worn outside so we're gonna put it down like this that's that. Now we're gonna put it back. Stupid winds now gotta pick up. Been harder than all hell. Now the damn winds gotta pick up. Here's our locking tab. See, it's got a little dimple in there. This dimple goes in there, and this is your, um, as you can see, it'll lock like so. Now. I'm looking at it. Oh, I guess that there's the tang. Never mind. So there we go. I'm set that down. I'm gonna set our little retainer. Oh, it's a spicer. Nice. Important. See instructions. This side out. Well, we'll look it up on the internet. We will look it up on the internet and we'll take off our retaining ring. It's actually pretty stuck. So I have to pry on it. So it was just a little jammed up on the little deal. So I just stuck a little flat blade screwdriver behind it and yeah. So we're gonna set everything face down the way it's gotta go. So that we're gonna go in order. So here's our preload, and uh, this is probably a little bit bigger socket. It's not the uh, one I bought, but well, luckily I bought a whole set. So we're gonna go ahead and get the set. So I already broke that guy loose. It's a weird size, two and nine sixteenths. Got a little notch here where it locks the uh, other locking tab in it. And there's our bearing. Oh. So I just gotta move that, and our bearing pops out as you saw. And don't want to drop it. So. I'm gonna set you guys down for a second. So we got our bearing out. It actually looks really good. I don't see anything wrong with it. No discoloration, no signs of running hot. Just normal wear. 
no pitting on it, no rust. Sometimes you get rust on them. So we're gonna wrap her up. So nothing gets in her. And we're gonna set it aside. Right over here. Now we can wiggle the hub off. So we gotta wiggle the hub off. Try to aim it in there so it can drain out. And then we can get our seal out. Where's our race? Actually looks really good. No wear. Pretty sure these are probably original bearings. So bearings, you know, as long as you maintain and keep your oil level and don't abuse the track bearings usually wheel bearings don't fail like that like in a car for instance i mean they can but if you run them hot or run them low or being that these are oil bath they tend to last longer on a semi truck versus um uh, you know grease pack and some trucks will have a grease pack i've seen them freightliner like to do it back in the day but most of your oil bearing your bearings ride in oil um your drive axles ride in oil because obviously you have the housing shares the uh, differential fluid so it uh it shares that so all right well we're gonna pull this hub off and we're gonna attempt to remove the seal and clean all this up and then we have to go get the seal i haven't got the seal yet because i wasn't able to uh i, I want to pull it off and see what numbers on it Wow, the seal actually stayed on. The seal actually stayed on the uh, spindle. Never seen that happen. All right. So this is our sleeve. This sets the preload of your bearing. Spindle looks great. Spraying also looks really good. Now this coloration. So we're gonna clean her up and send her back. And then we'll pop that seal off. Actually that makes it easier because we don't have to mess with trying to drive it out. So this is what it looks like underneath here. As you see, oil leaks from this seal. This is the seal. Now, these are usually like a two-piece. And uh, they just don't leak. And it's starting to go, as you can see all that. So, all right, let's go and pull this off. Get you a nice seal remover. <laughs> just like that. Pops right off. Uh, this is a aftermarket seal. This is one of them seals I think you can just drive without a seal driver. And as you guys can see, it's been leaking. So now what we'll do is we'll clean that surface area up. And it's actually, it looks really good. So I think the seal just basically failed. Anyway, we'll clean this up. I got some ether, which does the trick. And clean all this up in here so we're not saturating our brakes and then uh, I want to clean the seal up and we're gonna get the number off of it and I guess we're gonna go get a seal so the only thing I can see on the seal is it's kind of cocked but this is a CR seal this is a CR seal these are good seals these are the ones that you don't need to uh, we just pound them in with a block of wood they're hard to mess up but i guess it just over time it got old and it failed now it's really hard to see but I, the outside is pretty rusty and then uh that ring on the inside that's kind of where it was leaking because this sits on the spindle and that's where it was leaking like i already cleaned it off the evidence i saw was 
as you see see how it's the two piece that's starting to come apart so but these are good seals i'm gonna call the dealer right now hopefully they have one so we're in luck peterbilt has some of these and uh we're gonna go get them we're gonna go get a couple that way we have a spare man i'm really debating about i really want to stretch this truck the main reason is i want to put a toolbox on here because it's like i want to carry a lot more stuff with me now that doesn't really make it make it better because i have two other trucks that are running obviously but for this truck if i could do stuff like this on the side of the road which i could you know i spent most of the day today chasing a socket which you know i got there and there so i got all that for this truck already um be a little bit easier to do this kind of stuff on the road the big stuff you know but all right let's go to peterbilt 38.49 a piece skf but it's the same thing got a couple have one as a spare always nice these are good seals um if you guys ever do them these are the driverless seals so you could just tap them in with the block of wood they usually just go right in too they'll put a little uh oil on the side and on the lip and just pop right in if they don't then you're doing it wrong You want to get your service nice and clean where the seal rides. That's right, this area here. You want to wipe out your bearing races and inspect them. These look really good. Clean out your hub. Sorry, right there. Wipe down your bearing. I like to take my gear oil that I'm gonna run. This bearing has got to go in here first and then you're gonna put your seal in. Don't forget the bearing, so you're gonna be screwed. So we're gonna go do that now. Again, you're looking for pitting, you're looking for discoloration. Same thing with the races, you're looking for pitting, you're looking for discoloration. Scratches, I mean, you might see some if they're minor, it's probably okay. Um, after I wiped this down, this bearing looked like it had some minor scratches, but after so, it looked pretty good, so. Them on the inside of here too. You just want this guy to be happy. You don't want it to not be happy. I'm just gonna drop it in like so. I'll try to wipe our hands out off as much as we can. And this guy, we're gonna put a little bit of this. I'm just gonna put it tiny little bit, see, like so. And we're gonna just rub it around. That'll help it. We got our bearing in. We're gonna put our seal in. I just <laughs> actually just slid right in without even needing anything. So now, you have this together, you're ready to go on there. Now, what you need to understand is, you gotta work quickly. Meaning that, when you get that hub on, you have to hold it. And you have to have everything within reach. You gotta get your cone ready. Get your bearing ready, get your nut ready. So get it all ready before you do anything. Lubricate your bearing, your outer bearing, because when you put that hub on and that back bearing is gonna be riding back here and the seal is gonna be on the lip, you don't want this hub to sag because then it will ruin the seal. So you wanna get your bearing on, your front bearing on to be able to support it. So make sure you got your bearing ready within reach and you can slide it on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that ready real quick and uh, come back to you guys. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. Cone, face 
on the outside. Get your bearing. stuck. There we go. That's a very tight fit. Got her in. Now we work backwards. So we put our lock knot on. With the tab facing out, a little dimple. preload all right so the torque spec for these steer axles is 250 to 300 pounds now i'm going to split the difference here and go 275 reason being is this collar needs to align with these dimples and if it doesn't then we need to tighten it up a little bit more you don't want to loosen it so if i go 300 and it's too much so i don't want to over torque it but what you want to do is as you're tightening this down I'm gonna spin this because this will seat. All right, now we're tight. So now we can torque it, and we want to go to we're gonna go 275. So I'm gonna go get the big guy out, and uh, we're gonna go from there. All right, so now we're gonna torque it to 300, and uh, hopefully our tabs line up. gotta turn your hub while you're doing it. All right, looks like we're there. Feel lined up. Have lined up nicely. So I got our locking nut on with our dimple as you see down there. That's little deals in there. And now we can uh, put this guy on. Throw a retaining ring. Now we can put this guy on. This tap goes into the wheels here, like so. Also a locker. And then we're gonna put our nut on. Numbers facing out. Torque that one. That's how you set your preload. You want a little bit of drag on it, obviously. You've been doing this. No play. Yeah, I've been doing this since what well, morning because I have to go chase parts. Then been doing recording for one minute and six seconds that's right the only thing that's left is we're gonna bend our tabs and we can put clean this up clean this hub up and put our hub cap back on and 
put oil in it. Good to go. That ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna put some oil on this guy. We could put our drum back on. And the rest will filter here so we could keep an eye on the level. Spin it, get a little oil, get in that hub. put a little bit of weight on that you can really see how she's gonna spin it's a little resistance which that will loosen up a little bit even though they're old bearings what they always do especially when they get oil through them well, that's about right now we can tighten our brake up and uh yeah we're good to go that's just residue for me cleaning back here it's just ether so we're good. All right, let's adjust our brake. Yeah, see that gap getting smaller? I do. Perfect. Spins and it goes back just a tiny little bit. Disclaimer. So that inner nut that we torqued, the preset, to set the pre preload, I mean, preset on the bearing. 300 foot pounds 250 to 300 so i made a mistake that outer nut the lock nut the jam nut the smaller one 200 to 250 so 200 plus 50 max so i made that mistake so i had to correct that um i mean i said the wrong thing but i read i read the right thing so i torqued the inner one to 250 i mean the outer one to 250 the inner one to 300 so i said 300 earlier so don't listen to me Take it for what it's worth. This isn't an instructional video. If it helps someone, so be it. I mean, you get the idea. It's always nice to learn something new. There you go. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You 
You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up.